Welcome to Near the Curve, the point of most extreme change. I'm Emmett Short. Tesla's full self-driving has been under attack for having an aspirational name. You know, like most sports teams, like the Giants, the Kings, the Saints, the Saints. Alvin Kamara alone has caused more bodily harm than FSD. Tesla Fudsters and so-called watchdogs are trying to convince us we're in danger because we're just too stupid to read and understand the warnings or even the word beta. You're not too stupid, but everyone else. I think we should treat this like the pandemic and take measures to safeguard the most vulnerable and change the names of every misleading product. When's the last time in and out took less than 45 minutes? I demand we change their name to not worth the wait. Burger King, more like Burger Plebeian. White Castle, I'm thinking Soggy Encampment. You know, I could have used these watchdogs before I bought those urinal cakes. Lucky Charms, sure. If by lucky you mean diabetic, just think how many women we will save who have been using Trojans without realizing there's a dick in there. Crypto.com's debit card and trading platform is far and away my favorite. They have the highest staking percentages, 14% on stable coins. That's crazy. The most cash back of any card and they give you free Netflix and Spotify and Amazon depending on your level. I don't have a deal with them. I just love them and you can make 25 bucks if you use my link. CNBC just aired this video, Tesla's FSD beta, an experiment on public roads. The way that Tesla markets its driver assistance packages has historically been confused confusing. Tesla's standard driver assistance package is marketed as autopilot. For an extra $12,000 or $199 per month, Tesla sells an option it calls full self-driving or FSD. FSD beta takes this one step further, with unfinished features like auto steer on city streets and traffic light and stop sign control, which identifies stop signs and traffic lights and automatically slows your car to a stop upon approach. None of these packages come even close to making Tesla's vehicles autonomous. Tesla has been criticized for using terminology that exaggerates the capability of its vehicles. If you're marketing something as full self-driving and it is not full self-driving and people are misusing the vehicles and the technology that you have a design flaw and you have to prevent that misuse. So this is Jennifer Homendi, chairperson at the NTSB, vocal mouthpiece sort of against Tesla's efforts to, in her mind, make FSD safer. Jennifer Homendy doesn't think they're doing good enough. She's been in tons of articles. The NTSB wants to limit where Tesla's autopilot can be used. NTSB chair expresses concern over Tesla's inaction on safety recommendations. Tesla keeps ignoring the government's requests to fix autopilot. Tesla's not responding to them because the NTSB has no teeth. They have no authority. They, they cannot do anything besides make recommendations. The only thing they can do apparently about it is go on media outlets and complain. But the complaints are coming across as Tesla is doing nothing about these issues when in fact they're going above and beyond any government standard to make this thing as safe as possible. And according to the data, it's working extremely well. In the fourth quarter, we recorded one crash for every 4.31 million miles driven in which drivers were using autopilot technology. For drivers who were not using autopilot technology, we recorded one crash for every 1.6 million miles. By comparison, NHTSA's most recent data shows that in the United States, there's an automobile crash every 484,000 miles. So not only are Tesla drivers responsible just in regular driving, but when they're driving using autopilot, they're exponentially more responsible. Now I went to try to find the NTSB's actual list of, I think it's nine recommendations. I couldn't find them on their site. All I could really find was in this Verge article, NTSB recommended that Tesla and five other automakers install driver monitoring. So driver monitoring was something that they wanted, and that is something Tesla has taken care of. We covered the camera before attempting to engage FSD beta and were unable to, to do so. Yep, cabin camera is covered or blinded. When we covered the camera after FSD beta was already engaged, we were able to drive for about a block before None the system turned off oh, there we go. and gave us a strike. And that 
they wanted to limit the use of driver assist features on highways. So those are the two that I could find. This is Taylor Ogan. Ogan is not a professional test driver, nor is he a Tesla employee. Instead, he's one of the over 50,000 customers that Tesla has allowed to access FSD beta, a host of new driver assistant features that are not yet debugged. Chief among them is auto steer on city streets which enables drivers to automatically navigate around complex urban environments without the knowledge of drivers and pedestrians around them. This is the other major point of the piece, exposing the unsuspecting public to something dangerous without their knowledge or consent. They're taking a huge, huge gamble with this by putting an incomplete or a buggy piece of software on the road. Unless that incomplete or buggy software is still having a positive impact on road safety. Tesla's FSD beta program is heavily scrutinized by regulators and has earned Tesla side eye from competitors who usually have professionally trained drivers. Professionally trained drivers cost a lot of money and you can't have an entire fleet of them the size of Tesla's, which is why Tesla is going to be the first ones to create autonomous vehicles, which will immediately start saving people's lives. Still, their driver, Taylor Ogan, was not impressed. We're supposed to go left. We just ran a red light and now it's creeping. We're in the middle of an eight-way intersection, We're just stuck in the middle. So of course I have to take over. What's interesting is at no point in the video do they express the sentiment of how amazing it is that cars are able to even do this much. It's like when they trained an AI to spot skin cancer, but it was better at spotting it in white people. So they called the AI racist instead of being at all impressed that the AI could diagnose skin cancer. I mean, their whole complaint seems to be that it's a beta. If they didn't have all these complaints, then it wouldn't be in beta. It would be out of beta, it would be done. It would be an official product. So the point of this video seems to be that Tesla's methods don't work when in fact, they're working perfectly. The point of the beta is to collect all these errors so that the AI can learn from them. Okay, my thoughts. First, do they really think that changing the name of the software is going to save lives? Am I missing something? Is that, is that what they think? Because uh, I don't think it's gonna have the slightest effect. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. So this whole point about this experiment on public roads, putting regular civilians at risk. According to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, there are between 30 and 40,000 car crash fatalities every year. That's just in the United States. The data shows putting the beta on the streets is actually making those drivers safer, more attentive, less likely to have an accident. That's just the data. But what it's also doing is helping Tesla gather all the edge cases and make their AI better faster. So it's speeding up the process. Now, if the NTSB's real goal is to safeguard human lives, they shouldn't be trying to slow down Tesla's progress. The slower it goes, the more people die. Also, it doesn't seem to be as much of a critique against Tesla as it does against the intelligence of the people using the beta. So who's worse, Tesla for trusting the intelligence of average everyday citizens or the watchdogs for assuming we're all idiots? Watch this video to stay up to speed on how fast you're being left behind. Leave your thoughts in the comments, even the weird ones, especially the weird ones. I have algorithmic Stockholm syndrome, so like and share or take it to the next level and join Patreon and help make high tech low brow. And if you wanna be a part of the team and write jokes, DM me on Twitter and Discord. Click subscribe or let the AI radicalize you, your choice. See you in the future.